Hi and welcome to another episode of Unboxing of Power 9. I'm Steve Bradshaw and in the next few minutes I'm going to take you through hooking up an ops console to a Power 9 for the first time. Doesn't matter if it's a rack based one or a tower based one, process is the same. Uh, what I will say before I go any further is please get a HMC. I'm going to show you the ops uh, console on this one but HMCs are so much more reliable, so much better and will get you out of trouble. That said, today is all about operations console so let's crack on with that. We're doing this in real time, so I need to get this machine starting to boot as quickly as possible. Talking of saving in real time, the only thing I've done so far is I've put power cables in the back. The hypervisor initialized, so I saw lots of C codes here. And when the hypervisor, uh, the FSP, more on that later, has finished initializing, then I get my 01 Alpha November. Right, because I'm connecting this for the first time, I want to change the boot mode from A to B and from N to M. So to do that, I've got my up, down and enter buttons. I can do this whilst the machine is off, and it's off because that's flashing rather than on, and indeed it's not making any noise. So I'm going to press the up arrow once, go to O2, that's how I change it, press enter. Now I'm in the programming mode O2, I'm going to change the A to a B, press enter, the N to an M, and press enter, and I'm going to leave the T as it is. Now that I press enter again, that disappears, go back to O1, press enter, and it shows me the current settings. Brilliant. O1, bravo Mike, okay, the PVM there, and the T. Press enter, that's now gone solid, and the machine starts to power up. Okay, now we've got these SRC codes, system reference codes, and that is the hardware itself, so this is the actual physical server now coming to life before IBMI comes to life, which I've asked to be pre-installed on this particular machine. Uh, so, we start to see all the lights come to part, so I'm in my fan lights there on the hardware, and my NVMEs coming to life, brilliant. So. This is going to get noisy any second now. So I'm just going to pop around the back whilst this comes to life, because it takes a few minutes for that to initialize. It needs to walk the bus, initialize all the hardware, let all the, uh, these cards, which have their own little mini microsystem, uh, micro firmware based operating systems boot come to life. Uh, but let me just show you some power supplies at the back there. Okay, so the power supplies here, I've got an AC on the right, DC in the middle, and an attention light next to it. The AC alternating current is the input current that's coming in through this cable. The DC is the direct current being pushed back into the server the other side. I want solid lights on both of those. No flashing, please. And I definitely don't want an attention light. I want to see the same on all of the others. Great. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that they have these little bits of Velcro here. Look at that. You see, there, the Velcro is all bunched up. Here, you can see what it's actually for. The idea is that you pull it out. So there you go, pull it all the way out. You wrap it around the power supply. And really, I should have done this before I turned it on, but it doesn't matter. Right? And then wrap it around into a plat. That makes it really hard for you to accidentally disconnect the power cables from the back. Right? The number one reason why we lose servers, in my experience, is someone accidentally knocked out a power cable or a network cable. Now we can set redundancy in both, more on that in another video. All right, so we're just gonna have a quick check around the front, see how we're doing. So I've got a CC code there, that's the hardware itself still coming to life. Remember, this machine, the hardware, has, they all ship with power VM, so I can have many LPARs, logical partitions, perhaps you wanna call them virtual machines or VM, so lots of logical machines inside this one physical server. So, to manage it, this one is all about an operations console. In this case, I'm using a bog standard Windows PC. And I'm going to be using a bog standard network cable. No switches, uh, no DHCP servers, no nothing. So just, uh, it's not even a crossover cable. So just a direct cable, put it into the default port. If you were watching a previous episode, I told you which was the default port and the default card. If you weren't watching, shame on you. Where were you? Well. Operations console by default is the C11 card, the T1 slot, okay? If this was a rack mounted one, the T1 slot would be in the top, right? As it's a tower, it's on the far right hand side. All right, next tip, whilst we're waiting for the hardware to have finished initializing and the pre-installed version of IBM I to automatically start up, uh, is to disconnect any other network connections. So I'm just gonna make sure my wireless is not connected no, it's offering to connect, it's not disconnect, brilliant. And I'm going to turn off my Windows firewall just for this first connection. Uh, Windows firewall can stop the discovery process 
Uh, understandably, because you know, it's supposed to block any unusual traffic and you wouldn't normally be discovering things on uh, a normal network connection. So, just for those two, and that is purely for this first connection. Once we're done, we'll be re-enabling those and putting IP addresses in this end that would match your normal network. Now, I mentioned that we're not using anything special at all. So, what IP address am I using? What's the default IP address for one of these? The simple truth now is it doesn't matter. So, those of you who know about DHCP, ignore the next few seconds. Uh, if you set a machine to have an automatic IP address given to it, a DHCP, yes, right? then if there is no DHCP server, it defaults a 169.254 address, as you see there. That's those first two numbers will be 169.254. The next two numbers, or octets, will be randomly generated. That's happened here on my PC. That's going to happen there on my uh, operations console. So, those of you who know about DHCP will realize that that's probably just over a thousand IP addresses, 1,023 I think to be exact, that it could be on, combinations. So, it's likely to have to search at least 500 of those. But that's all right, it's a computer. And it does it automatically because we use ACS. So, how do you do that? Well, you launch ACS, and if you're not using ACS, stop immediately, go download it and use it. One of the most common reasons why I hear uh, support calls is people are either trying to use the old client or they're using the methodology with BootP that was associated with the old client. None of that matters anymore. You are living in a modern world of ACS. So, click on system configuration. You'll then get the system configuration panel. Click on this wonderful locate console. It brings up this dialog here. And we're going to be clicking on search to look for a console. When I click on it, it greys out. Now, we have to be at a certain point of the operating system boot for that to work. So, let's see where we're at. We're currently at C600, 4036. Brilliant. We needed to be at a minimum of C600, 4031. So, at that point there, I'd expect it to discover a console. Now, as I mentioned, it has got literally a thousand IP addresses to look around. So it doesn't necessarily find it straight away, but be patient. If it comes back on, click on search again, okay? And you will find, it will eventually find it. Right, just for a bit of added bonus, whilst we're searching on that, it will automatically appear at the top there shortly. Um, one of the things I mentioned in the previous episode was these USB ports here. So these are this, this is where the FSP is, the flexible service processor. This is the hypervisor itself. It's got Two different network cards there, which for connecting HMCs. We love HMCs. It's got a serial port there for those of you who want to have a serial-based connection. That's what our AIX brethren do. And it's got two USB ports. Not to be confused with the blue USB ports. These are usable by guest operating systems. These belong to the hypervisor. Why would you want one of those? Well, you would want one of those so you could hook up one of these, which is a USB-based uh, UPS cable. So it's got USB at that end and it's got an RJ45 at that end. What that allows me to do, I'm going to take that, I'm going to get the cable that comes with my system, my UPS itself, my apologies, and I'm going to hook that into it. This one can go into either of these ports at this end. So, there we go, I'm going to pop that into the first HMC, doesn't matter which. That end would go into the cable provided by the USB, by the UPS provider. Why is UPS so hard to say? All right, let's have a quick check around the front again. Make sure we're moving forward with our codes. All right, that's still there. Now, if you should see A600, uh, 5008, it just means you waited too long. That's one of those asking a question things. Uh, so in that particular case, you would want to just uh, go and do the discovery and it would still disappear away. There we go. I waited long enough and it found the console. Now, what we're going to do next is select that. And then we're going to click on console. It brings up a DST login. By default with IBM I, if you've got a pre-installed one, it comes with four users. What we call all the ones and all the twos. That's eight ones or eight twos. The password is the same, eight ones and eight twos. Of course, you're going to be changing those. You've also got QSEC offer. Of course, this is IBM I, but it's a different QSEC offer. 
the one that belongs to the DST, uh, and that one has a, a default password of capital, QSECOFFER, or QSECOFFER in capitals. There's also one called QSRV, excuse me. Uh, that one is disabled, so don't bother with that. So I'm going to try the eight one, uh, sorry, the eight twos to begin with. Um, that's okay. Uh, why did I do that, you say? Well, you know, sometimes when you've got keyboard mapping problems, particularly if it's a non-American keyboard, you're never quite sure about special characters. So sticking with all numerics definitely makes your life easier. So it's told me there that the, all the twos password has expired. Okay, I'm going to change that. So I'm going to start by putting all the twos in again. So that's eight twos. Now my beautiful partner, Claudia, uh, she is German. So I'm going to go with a password that is uh, familiar to me, uh, which is here hearing the word nine a lot. So I'm going to take nine uh, eight uh, times. That serves me right for doing a humor based on my girlfriend. I'm going to type it this time with just eight characters. I think I want too many. Warn me, there was too many there. And that, of course, then brings up the DST console screen itself, a nice little 5250. That's triggered automatically by IBM I. Let's move out the way just there a little bit. And the next thing we're going to see very shortly is the actual DST screen, the dedicated service tools screen. We've got a series of options at that point uh, where we could actually IPL the machine. Uh, we could install a different version of the operating system or we can reconfigure it. And that's where we're going to head next. When we see that, we're going to go inside the DST. Uh, and I'm just going to show you the uh, option to change the IP address so that it's no longer this randomly generated 169 address, but to put a, a fixed IP address in there that works with your network. Now, bear in mind that this is the first time this machine is starting up. So it is still booting uh, and it's doing some discovery processes. So things like finding the console can take a little bit longer. This is another reason why our HMC is better, because you don't have these delays. But hey, more on that. Anyone would think I was going to keep going on about HMCs all the time? Oh my goodness. Let's just take a look at the front. So that's that code I was telling you about before. You saw it ever so briefly, saying A600 5008. It took too long for the console to come up, and then it automatically cleared. The light actually went out. And that tells me that when I walk back here, that it has now found the console. So sometimes it's just a timing error. It heals itself nine times out of 10. Be patient. So I need to go into DST so that I can change that IP address on that port over there. Fine. So to go into the dedicated service tools, option number three. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a QSEC offer password. Remember by default, that's QSEC offer in capitals. Okay, first time in, so I've got to change it. Now that I'm inside the DST, I want to work with the DST environment, number five. And I want to work with the system devices, because a console is a system device. Then I want to select the console, Number six. Okay. It's told me that it's found an operations console rather than a HMC. Please go to a HMC. HMCs are so much better. Press enter and it tells you where your current console card is. Fine. And all importantly at the bottom there, you've got F11 to configure it. Right. Here are the settings for configuring it. This allows me to put in a fixed IP address and a gateway, in case I'm going remotely, set the subnet mask so it matches. Then I can take the option to store it if I want to carry on with this setting for now. Or if I want to switch over to it, then I can do the F17 deactivate followed by reactivate. If you do do that, do remember that you need to change the PC quite quickly so it's got a matching subnet. Uh, otherwise, suddenly you'll lose your connection. Uh, doesn't matter if you do this now or if you do it later. I'm going to step out of this and just go back to uh, the DST. And then... I'm going to take the option to perform an IPL. Okay. From this point, it's bog standard IBM I 
uh, as if you're doing a manual IPL. There's the first 16 steps of the lick starting up, and then it'll switch to the IBMI part. Now, I'm almost done. You should be used to that by now. But I would say, what would happen if you didn't have a pre-installed version of IBMI? Well, it'd be exactly the same process that I described to you, only you'd have some sort of alternate device on the front. Uh, maybe it's a tape or a pre-installed version from a USB stick. But you would then be using the D mode um, version of this to boot up. If it's uh, not got a, uh, a HMC, then that D mode the first time, I'm afraid you're going to have to be using the USB uh, based um, panels on the front. So that either needs to be a memory stick or a USB DVD drive. Look at one of the previous episodes from the, um, the unboxing and I showed you what one of those look and where they go by. Uh, if you've got a HMC, that doesn't apply. Sorry, a bit of a rant at the end there. Ultimately, you end up with something that looks familiar and beautiful, the beginning of your IBMI. I hope that was useful. I hope it answered a few questions. The main thing I need you to remember is you need to be using a, uh, ACS. I need you to be patient and I need you to be using the right port here. And don't worry about all this old fashioned boot P business where you set up and drains and think you've got a default IP address. None of that matters anymore. You can use the discovery process inside ACS. So join me on another episode and we'll do something else fun unboxing a Power 9. See you soon.